Hey everybody, I'm uh, recording this actually just after coming off of a massive day from day one of Home Story Cup. We had some excellent games and they'll be uploaded to YouTube. Obviously, I hope you check them out. But the big message here is that I'm live right now. If you're watching this, it's a good chance you're going to see me live on twitch.tv slash base trade TV. Please come give me a visit. And if you're coming in from YouTube, give me a holler. Let me know you came from the channel because I'd love to see you. Hey guys, we're live, kind of. For Rifkin. Why though? Why? Why though? Oh my god! Oh, I didn't so see that at all! Fly! Fly, you sicko! No, oh, fuck. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> yeah, see, look at that. But with that being said, let's hop into the cast. What do you call a can opener that's broken? A can't opener. To the top left, dearest YouTube audience, we have the Blue Protoss, the only AI that I know with this badass of a name. It's Alpha Star. And their opponent to the bottom right, a red Protoss, a human known as the Master Player. Now, this version of Alpha Star is coming from the middle of the development. I said to myself, we've been casting a lot of ZVT recently, so let's grab a Protoss. And I found this whoa, PVP, but this PVP just got really spicy. We got a cannon rush coming down here for Alpha Star to deal with. This will be really interesting to see. I don't know how Alpha Star will handle this. I'm calling all the Alpha Star games I've cast. And I don't know. This might be our first cannon rush ever. Uh, checking the vision of Alpha Star. Sees the pylon going down immediately. Quick reaction to pull a couple of probes, but perhaps realizing how important this is because you need to wall yourself in here. The idea is that you want to build this cannon without the probes getting us around because the probes can totally kill it, but the other probe is an equally large threat to this. So there's a couple of things Alpha Star has to manage in this situation. One is continuing to mine. A lot of probes were left mining, so kudos to Alpha Star making the right call, not overreacting with the probe pull. However, that being said, this cannon gets started up and there's still no DPS going into it. Uh, there's a Zealot on the way and Alpha Star just put a Chrono Boost into that to try and get the Zealot down here to help fight. So many probes have been pulled off this, but you have to consider one, two, three pylons plus a cannon. That's 450 some odd minerals and both the probes going down. This cannon rush is over. I was going to say, it's about 450 minerals-ish that our red player had to invest to get this up in the first place. Oh, it's targeting the Zealot. It's not even targeting probes. That, ooh, that hurts. That's not even gonna kill the Zealot either. So it's 450 minerals some odd lost just through buildings and structures alone. Add into the fact that, of course, um, wait, two cannons. Was the second cannon build and I missed it? Oh, that might be what they replaced it with. I thought that was a pylon. Oh, that really stinks. That's a lot of money gone for our red, our red Protoss player, our red human in this case. However, it is worth noting that the money lost through this investment was maybe equalized by the amount of probes pulled with so many workers off of mining there was a significant amount of non-income for alpha star for that period dealing with this so 20 on probes to 18 at the moment uh income's gonna look close to even i am a little worried though our master player is gonna have to pull workers of their own to deal with the zealot luckily the zealot is kind of low on hp but there's no cannons at home to defend and certainly no gateway to produce their own units. So this probe will come back over to the base and see that there's no Nexus that's been taken yet. Although if they want to block it out, now would be the time to do it. And they're certainly thinking about doing just that. So probe sits here to be really annoying and another, well, an adept gets kerned out. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, the Zealot is focused down immediately. Oh, nice micro trick on the probe. Mineral walking it through the back line ends up taking no losses to the Zealot counterattack. So both players handling their early game aggression fairly well in this case. I do feel like Alpha Star still gets the better end of this. However, it's worth noting our master player is the one who's taken a Nexus. And for all of Alpha Star's efforts, being down a Nexus in a PvP, I don't care how much of an AI you are, this is going to be a huge advantage. You know, I'm just <laughs> I'm just thinking back to that dumb joke I told at the start, and I swear to God, I didn't know what was going to happen in this game as we got into it, but I guess they could have said, what do you call a cannon that doesn't work? Or what do you call a cannon rush that doesn't work? A cannon rush. Double whammy for the cast. Twitch.tv slash base trade TV. Get in here. Okay. So getting back to focusing on this, however, our our, our human player is not yet ahead. Uh, the adept's going to be something that needs to manage. This is not a full wall off, so the adept slips in. Oopsies. But another quick full surround. So kudos to our master's player for handling this once again. Losing a couple probes, but nothing too unmanageable. They're up in a whole nexus over Alpha Star after all. 
but there's an Oracle on the way and Alpha Star is going to continue laying in the aggression. If Alpha Star can't take a base, then Alpha Star is going to kill workers and even up the pace of this game. And we'll watch that happen here with the Oracle. But going back to what I was starting to talk about at the beginning of this, uh, we've been casting a lot of Alpha Stars all over the place. Some Grandmasters, some Masters. Honestly, I'm just trying to pick the matchups. I'm not really trying to pick the development. I know some of you have made specific requests asking us to do this a little bit more chronologically. To be honest, I'm just grabbing what looks fun at the time. Uh, I may change my thoughts on that later as there are many, many replays to go through. But yeah, we take a trip back to the Master's Land just because I want to get a shakeup. We've seen so many Zergs and Terrans and God knows they just finished casting like 12 hours of Home Story Cup. That was 90% ZVT. So I needed some Protoss. I needed to cleanse my palate. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, or enjoy this as much as I hope that I will. Uh, the fact that this was a cannon rush that failed and then Alpha Star <laughs> takes their natural at their third. This is the least conventional PvP I have seen in a long, long time. Now, Oracles, of course, are labeled as armored units. For years, they were light units, so a lot of people are still getting used to this fact, but armored units do take bonus damage from Stalkers, making this a lot easier for Stalkers to clean up now than they ever have in the past. Worker kill count now up to 13 in total for Alpha Star through constant, relentless aggression. So despite having the second base, despite having the second production facility and Chrono Boost available, our human is not getting ahead in this game economically. That being said, though, there is a caveat to this. Alpha Star took so long to get a second base up, and their second base is really exposed. So it's not like Alpha Star has a clear advantage right now. I will say Alpha Star is in a much better position, clearly, based on resources lost and how this game's been pacing out. But for the most part, I would say this is closer than not, at least for now. Once bigger units like the Immortals get into play, that'll start changing around. Once a Warp Prism starts shuttling units, denying shots, shield batteries too. There's a lot to be said for what PvP offers. And PvP, you know, Protoss in general, their design structures, their units are very expensive. So even though you've only got a few units on the map, there's still plenty to play with and play around. And Blink's going to be the weapon of choice for our human. This might end up being a mistake. We'll find out. We've got some Stalkers walking forward right now. The total Stalker count, though, is 7 to 6. With the Oracles in play, advantage goes to Alpha Star for the fight, no question about it. But reinforcement lines are going to be here and immediate for our Master player. Oh, but they're going to have to pick and choose now. Deal with the Adepts or deal with the Stalkers. There's a huge threat looming, and this is a tough battle. With Stasis Wards being placed down inside the base as well, there's no chasing because if our human player takes the bait and chases into those Stasis Wards, they're going to lose control of their entire army for a good amount of time. In fact, how long does a Stasis Ward last? 21 seconds. 21 seconds feels like a lifetime in StarCraft 2. Oracles continue to zip around. I guess a kamikaze run grabs a couple of probes. The stalkers start shooting it away. Uh, some stalkers were left in the main anticipating a move like this. This was a great uh, prediction out of our human. Alpha Star is punished for it. One of the Oracles goes down. Once both are removed from play, our human won't need to leave anything behind in the main and could focus on the front. But Alpha Star, we've talked about this before, and we'll bring it up again now. Alpha Star's greatest strengths are, without question, her ability to macro. And back on the other side of the map, you'll notice there are three bases set down. That Nexus finishing up with the natural base is going to be massive in terms of gains for this game. And then the Adepts get cleaned up here with relative ease. The probes being pulled are never favorable, but kind of necessary in some of these situations. The probes being pulled towards the shield battery to deny this Oracle from getting many kills. But all child's play because for alpha star sure they might be behind an upgrade plus one favors the human but alpha star has got a dark shrine finishing up their production facilities are going to be greater their income is just plain more there's kind of a clock ticking actually blink's a huge asset for red and if red goes across the map immediately might be able to catch alpha star at a time before their army gets too out of hand to handle but we're kind of already at that point. Plenty of stalkers were just warped in recently. Now you've got even more joining the fray. Immortals as well absolutely cinch this early game battle. When it comes down to it, plus one weapons is great, but it's eight stalkers to 10, and more importantly, the immortals there too. And that Oracle, don't count her out. She'll do some damage on the back line too if forced to fight or get caught out in the open. Oh, nice catch there out of the uh, master player. The high ground, weak stalkers, blank stalkers versus not blank. That is a big advantage, but not big enough in my books. Back at home, there's a Templar Archive starting up in charge. So we're going to see, I think, a much more classic composition coming out of red. One that involves more charge lots and archons. Uh, this, this will work out fairly well, actually, specifically because Alpha Star isn't going for blank. If Alpha Star was going for blank and disruptors, this style from red would be the worst composition to go for. 
But more gateways, a third Nexus on the way. They're only a little bit behind in base timing, but they are a lot behind in probes. And sadly, because this does come from the ladder, we don't have an income graph I can show you. But if you're just eyeballing down here, the money difference has been incredible so far. I mean, it's almost a thousand, not quite, but almost a thousand minerals more per minute for Alpha Star. To put that in context, that's like four extra stockers per warp in round, right? There's just so much extra money going into what Alpha Star can produce. And that army supply is reflecting right now. 12 stockers to seven, two Archons. And despite being the one who was cannon rushed, and despite being the one who had to pull those probes, Alpha Star is looking to storm across the map and punish our human for their mistakes, for their cheesy transgressions. Third base is just canceled, abandoned ship. All money now used on warp ins. All defensive warp ins used up now. Zealots, Archons, Shield Battery. I love the DT in the mix, by the way. I don't think there's actually any. De no. There's no detection for our human player. They don't even have their own robo to make an observer. Alpha Star, of course, has no knowledge of this, but if they did, all it would take is some DTs to end this game. And in fact, just one DT in the main base. I didn't even catch this going on. Sorry, killing some probes on the back line. Four, six kills, something like that. Grand total of 29. That work account plummets. And of course, that was all posturing around this front fight, which by the way, Alpha Star is cutting magnificently. One person comes in, but it's focused. Nice focus fire out of red. But while this goes on, that DT continues to go uncontested in the main base. Uh, yeah, Cannon finishes up here very soon and could maybe kill the... Well, it'll provide detection. The Zealots will kill the DT. But still, an entire base denied mining. No third to speak of, while Alpha Star enjoys three bases worth of economy. If that warp prism didn't die, this game would probably be over right this second because there'd be warp ins like plenty on the front lines. Instead, Alpha Star has to warp them at home and walk them across the map. But make no mistake, some big reinforcements are on the way. Archons, Immortals, and of course, Zealots aplenty. Alpha Star does have charge as well. They're just, uh, the AI is down two weapon upgrades, but two weapon upgrades don't make up for double the army supply. And that's kind of where we are at right now. As time goes on and there's no third base, if anything, our Masters player will lose to attrition. If this was to go on infinitely, permanently three bases to two, this guy just simply runs out of money before Alpha Star does. I do like the Robo though. I think Disruptors are the only chance our human player has to get back into this game, but oh, between supply blocks and lack of money, I don't know if we're gonna see Disruptors much in time for this. The soccer fight begins in the middle of the map. No blink. Oh, actually, Alpha Star did finish up blink. Forgot about that. So blink now. Meeting meeting our human player in every tech advantage except weapon upgrades. And that's okay because you can get over plus two weapon upgrades really easily when your army supply is pretty much double in every regard. I like watching the humans win. I don't like watching Alpha Star win. But I do like watching Alpha Star win when in retaliation to somebody hitting an Alpha Star with a cheesy all-in like a cannon rush. No detection for these DTs, they just push forward. And with no way to see the enemy, GG's go down and Alpha Star takes the series. If you guys liked what you saw, of course, please leave a like on the video. Make sure to comment if you have any comments you want me to read and consider subscribing. Other than that, come catch me on Twitch and I'll see you guys over for Home Story Cup.